Let's look at how to sketch, calculate, and interpret the linear regression line. Over here, we have a graph that's plotting two different variables of vehicles. We have vehicle weight versus its miles per gallon. So on the x-axis here, the uh, explanatory variable is the weight of the vehicle. And then the response variable, the one that uh, reacts to the vehicle weight, is going to be the miles per gallon. And based on this general trend, it looks like heavier cars tend to have lower miles per gallon. And that seems to make sense at first glance. So that is the data that we're going to be working with here. Now we're asked to sketch the regression line. We're not asked to do any calculations here. We're just asked to make a sketch. And when you do that, all you're trying to do is find a straight line that you can draw through your data that best fits this data. So if I were to start here, I would probably draw something close to this here. When you're sketching it, it's a little bit more of an art than a science. You're trying to get roughly half the points above and half the points below your line. Uh, similar distances, you don't want anything particularly far away from the line but you're really just making an estimate. And what you're trying to, to uh, show with this line is generally the trend of the data, the linear trend of the data. Now the regression line has a few names. You could call it just the regression line. That's what we'll typically call it. You could also call it the line of best fit, the least squares line, uh, or the least squares regression line, which is sometimes referred to then as the LSR line for short. So there's lots of different terms that are typically used with a regression line. Just be aware if you see any of these, they're all talking about the same thing. This linear, uh, this line that fits your data uh, the best. Now, instead of just sketching uh, the line of best fit, the regression line, we actually need to calculate it and then be able to interpret what that formula means. So, if we look at this here, we have all these data points. In this table, it's the exact same data points, except now they're all expressed in a table as numbers. We're going to assume that car weight is the x-axis, uh, as we had before, and miles per gallon is y. So when we're putting things on our calculator, that means this is going to be list 1, and our y, mpg, is going to be list 2. So we'll bring out our calculator, and... Uh, in case you didn't have this up, you're going to go to Stat, Edit. So Stat, Edit, and then you're going to have, uh, in your list one, you'll clear it and type in all of these numbers. And even though they're not numerically in order, I would type them in the order you see them here. Same thing with miles per gallon. And the reason you would do that is that way you'll make sure that your X corresponds with the given Y. X corresponds with the given Y and so forth for every single data point. Because if you don't do that, uh, you might end up getting some of your points mixed up. Once all the data is typed in, pause if you need to, once all the data is typed in your list 1 and list 2, you're going to go to Stat, you're going to go to Calc, and you're going to go down to number 4, Linreg, and push Enter. And when you do that, you're going to get uh, Y equals AX plus B, and then A and B, along with your values of R and R squared. So if we go back and look at this data here in context, we need to figure out what all of this means. First of all, we want to write the least squares regression line, just the regression line. And to do that, we're going to follow this pattern, y equals ax plus b. So we're going to simply write y equals, and instead of writing the letter a, we're going to actually put the number that it stands for. So it says here we actually have a number for a, uh, negative point zero zero three four five three five four excuse me uh, and then after a we have x and x is going to still be a variable just like here it is so we're going to leave x and then we're going to add b b is another value that we were given so we're going to add b down here so our regression line equation is going to be y equals negative point zero zero three five four x plus thirty seven point three 
Next thing we're going to look at is our labels for x and y. We want to make sure we understand our units so that we can actually interpret this equation. Now the units on x, we're just going to look to our variable over here. x is the car weight, so uh, although it doesn't say it, we're going to infer that that is in pounds. So x is going to be uh, have units of pounds, referring to the weight of the car. y is going to be how many miles per gallon we're getting, so our MPG. The slope, we're going to look at both the number and units for the slope. If you remember, the slope is always going to be, uh, when you're thinking in algebra terms, y equals mx plus b, it's going to be the m. It's going to be the, the uh, number right next to x when we're in slope intercept form, which is what we are in. So our slope is going to just be negative 0.00354. That would be the number part. That's the slope. A is always going to be your slope when you do it in your calculator. Now the slope is always a, is a uh, rise over run, or y over x. And you might even want to write that down. Slope is always going to be y over x. or rise over run. Now, the units then for y would be miles per gallon. The units for x would be pounds, as we just said here. So it would be miles per gallon per pound would be the units of your slope. It seems a little bit weird to say miles per gallon per pound. That's just the way it happens to end up in this particular problem. Uh, when you start substituting values in to calculate things later with this equation, it will cause everything to work out nicely so that your final result will come out to miles per gallon. And then finally, the y-intercept. The y-intercept is that 37.3 tacked on at the end. And the units on that happen to be miles per gallon. Now, it's specifically referring to the time because it's a y-intercept, it's when x is equal to zero. And in this problem, if x is pounds or the weight of the car, it's saying this is how many miles per gallon you would get if your car weighed zero pounds. One thing to really watch out for is that in many, many, many problems, the y-intercept does not make any sense. Why would you ever have a car that weighs zero pounds? You absolutely wouldn't. So this number here, really just helps correct things in the range that we are given. We'll talk about something called uh, extrapolation later and why it can be a problem. Uh, many times the y-intercept is an example of extrapolation, which is why it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But that's actually what it refers to. It's saying if your car weighed nothing, you would get 37.3 miles per gallon. So let's do one more uh, short example just to make sure we have the concept down for the uh, equation here. Let's imagine that hours spent on Facebook causes a decrease in your test scores. So you start out with the possibility of getting a 95. That's what it would predict you would get if you spent no time on Facebook. And then the more time you spend on Facebook, you would continually lose more and more points. Starting with our labels then, x is referring to uh, the explanatory variable. And in this case it says hours spent on Facebook causes something else. So our x variable is going to be hours spent on Facebook. Then the y, the response, is going to be the decrease in test scores. So it's going to be referring to the number of points on your test. So here we have hours on Facebook and here we have points referring to points on the test. The slope is always rise over run or y over x. We know the number part is going to be right here, this negative 2.26. And the reason that is is because when you're in slope intercept form, the slope is always the number sitting next to x. So we know we're looking at rise over run then for our units. And so it would be our y, our rise over x, our run, 
decrease in test scores over hours spent on Facebook, it would be points over hours on Facebook. That would be our units. Sometimes these units are just not going to make a whole lot of sense in uh, by themselves. And that's okay because when in the context of actually solving any problems with these, these units will work out exactly as they're supposed to as long as you do it all correctly. So the slope is negative 2.26 points per hour on Facebook. And really, uh, this one you could interpret. You lose 2.26 points every hour you spend on Facebook. Finally, the y-intercept is this number out here, 95. That's where you start if you spend no time on Facebook. When x is equal to 0, x is the hours on Facebook. When x is equal to 0, that term would drop away, so you would end up with 95 points. So if you spend no time on Facebook, you would get 95 points on this test. Uh, and in this case, the y-intercept might actually make sense, so it might not be uh, extrapolating to have that.